I was obsessed for many years by a young man or boy called Herschel Grimsbaum, who was a German Jew born in Hanover of Polish parents. It's a strange name, Grinspan. It means green tree or green baum. Herschel was a young green sapling tree. He was a boy of 17. In the morning, November the 7th, 1938, it was an unusually mild morning for that time of the year. The temperature was 60 degrees, unusual Indian summer. People were in the cafes enjoying coffee, croissants, brioche. Herschel went to a gun shop, went up to the man and said, I want to buy a gun. The time was exactly 8.30. He was the first customer of the day. The man said, why should you want a gun? He said, I need it for security. I carry large sums of money for my father. The man had no reason to disbelieve him. He gave him a gun. He showed him how to use it. It was called a vest gun. He bought some bullets, went into a cafe, loaded the chambers. Then he went into the metro. At the time, in 1938, Herschel, who had fled to Paris, fled from German persecution that was going on all over Europe at that time, a gradual, gradual strangulation of the Jews of Germany. They had lost their jobs. Under the Nuremberg laws, they were forbidden from being teachers, journalists, doctors, scientists, draftsmen, architects. So Herschel had fled to Paris. He received a card from his family, from his sister. They had been taken away in the middle of the night. There was a law saying all Jews of foreign extraction must be out by November the 7th. They were torn out of their beds in the middle of the night. They put onto a railway station. The sister said, can we at least take some things from our house? No. What you have in your hands is what you take. So she wrote to Herschel, 17-year-old youth, saying, please, can you help us? So Herschel did something which his spirit told him to do. He couldn't stand it anymore. It was unspeakable, intolerable to sit there and watch thousands being taken out of their homes. For what reason? Some vague political reason. Questions were being raised, the military men, they were still men of some honor. They didn't want to be part of this peculiar and bizarre racial purge that was going on. So Hitler needed a scapegoat. He needed to show that the Jews somehow were inside and behind a conspiracy. And Herschel gave them this excuse. In the morning, November the 7th, 1938, it was an unusually mild morning for that time of the year. Herschel Grimsbound went to a shop. He was living in Paris at the time and bought a gun for the express purpose of killing the first German that he saw. This German was to be a man called Vom Rat, who was an undersecretary at the German embassy. He was to meet his fate that morning. Herschel went into the embassy. He asked to see the ambassador. The clerk at the embassy questioned him. What did he want, this young boy of 17, looking rather naive, uncouth, strange? Herschel said, I have some information. The Germans did have, at the time, an office where spies could reveal and sell information. So Herschel was ushered in to the room. Von Rath was sitting in his chair. He was facing the window. He turned in his chair, swiveled around. Yes, what can I do for you, young man? Sit down. Herschel pulled out his gun and said, You filthy German Bosch. 
This is for 12,000 Jews that you have deported and shot him five times. Bang! 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 Ron Rath is lying there in the pool of blood. He's not dead. He's arrested. He's taken away. And that's how we have the information of what Herschel's last words were. Herschel was trying to avenge, in the only way, a young man could, who was 17, and sees his own mother being taken away. How, how could he do anything else? I mean, what would you do? How could you bear to see it? What could you feel when you see your family just torn out of their homes where they had lived for many years? What would you feel? Herschel Grinspell has shot dead Von Rat. And Von Rat was immediately, posthumously, promoted into first secretary. He had to build up the idea that there was this important figure, almost a leading political figure, had been assassinated. It gave it a kind of a smell of a conspiracy. It's what he needed. So, two nights later, Hitler and his gang got together to plan one of the most savage and barbaric explosions that had ever been seen in any nation outside of war. It was called Kristallnacht. It was a night of broken glass when German gangs, Nazi gangs, seemed to unite in every village, in every town, every city, throughout the whole of the Third Reich as if by telepathy, as if by some spiritual guidance, suddenly the will of the German people exploded in this act of barbarism. But it wasn't the will of the German people. It was stage managed. It was carefully coordinated. On November the 9th, the gangs acted and smashed every Jewish house, shop, business, Factory, synagogue, 30,000 arrests, scores of people dead, beaten, or raped. This was called Crystal Mount. And the excuse was that Herschel Grimsbaum was part of a conspiracy. And that's all that Hitler needed to unite a race behind him. Herschel's act led the Jews of Germany to hell. But also in that night, there was a stroke of lightning, and in that flash, the world could see the foaming lips of the beast. And yet it did nothing. Herschel eventually died. We don't really know what happened to him. He was put on trial in Paris. And for me, Herschel was a hero. I think of Herschel of a brave young boy who wanted to avenge the persecution of his family, his race. And for this, we are truly grateful to Herschel. Grinspell, green tree, young sapling tree that never reached fruition.